Do you wait for everything to be perfect and lined up straight before you make a choice? How hard are you trying to get everything in your life right? What if jumping in and getting messy is one of the ways to find out what works for you? Discover how being willing to mess up can create the phenomenal life you truly desire. Get ready to quit judging and start embracing all of your messy adventures. Now, here's your host, self-declared messy living expert, Katrina Fava. Hello and welcome to Messy Adventures in Living. I'm your host, Katrina Fava. Thank you for listening in. Uh, today, our talk is Breaking Up with Poverty with our guest, Erica Glessing. So um, before we get started, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about Messy Adventures in Living, if this is your first time listening or joining us. Um, if you are listening and you'd like to join us, please, please call in with any questions that you have. We would love to take your questions. Um, you can call 1-815-880-8255 in the U.S., or 1-613-800-8736 in Canada. You can also join us via Skype, or you can come and play with us in the chat room. It's super fun if you go to a to zen.fm and click on the chat room link in the red bar at the top of the uh, site, and then plug in a name, and you can come and join us and play. So, um, Messy Adventures in Living. I am Petrina Fava. I, um, if you don't know me, I am a person who does a whole bunch of different things. I am a registered nurse in Toronto. I uh, work with kids. I also am an access consciousness body and bars facilitator. Um, I also teach infant massage classes. I am a radio show host. I'm an author of three um, different books that I've collaborated on with a bunch of different women and who have actually been published by our guest, Erica Glessing. So today, what are we talking about? We're talking about breaking up with poverty. You guys ready to break up with poverty? Um, are you trying, have you been trying to seduce luxury but having a relationship with poverty? Did you create a pretty good life in spite of poverty or do you value your poverty in some way? Are you proud of creating a life in spite of it or just seem to love it for some strange reason? Your ties to poverty are a turnoff to luxury. I'd like to break up with poverty and begin a love affair with luxury instead. So thanks for joining Eric and I. Let's break off that dysfunctional relationship once and for all. Wouldn't it be fun to play with luxury instead? So, I think we have Erica Glessing here. Hi, Erica. Welcome. Good morning. Hi, Good everybody. Morning. Hey. Hello. It's morning where you are, isn't it? It's like really early in the morning. <laughs> it's not light yet, but I'm not going to hold that against us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, do you want to um, take a minute to introduce yourself, uh, Erica. Do you want to tell the listeners a little bit about you and happy publishing? Uh, well, my name's Erica Glessing, and I am, um, I have publishing in my genes, so I'm like third generation. I became a writer in the 80s, and so I've always written my entire life. Uh, right now, I am having so much fun working with uh authors, but others on facilitating change in the direction of consciousness. It's just been a wonderful journey this last few years, publishing so many great authors. And, it, you know, isn't it crazy, Petrina? Her book, so Petrina wrote in the book, The Power of Original Judgment, and her chapter was called, you know, Hey, Judgment, you know, Dear Judgment, We Are Breaking Up. <laughs> and I went into, oh, my gosh, how many years have I made choices that were just, you know, so impoverished, so mm -hmm. impoverished, and it is a disconnect with my whole self. Like, it doesn't make sense. Does it, you know, it's like it doesn't, it isn't me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know, when you, so Erica posted something on Facebook uh, <laughs> a while ago, and I jumped at it and, and um, asked her to be on the show. And, and what you wrote was that you were breaking up with poverty, similarly to how I was breaking up with judgment in the book, Releasing Judgment. And what what I 
um, what I really get with these two things, and there's probably other things too, but when I was writing Breaking Up, uh, Dear Judgment, We're Breaking Up, what I got, when I was writing it in a letter form, what I got was that it was really, it was like having a relationship. It was like a dysfunctional relationship. And I get that it's similar with poverty. Like I get how you can have this just almost dysfunctional relationship with poverty where it's like you want to break up, but you keep going back to it. And you, know, you know. want you want yeah. this other boyfriend called luxury, but you know luxury is not really attracted to you because he can see that you're still tied to poverty. You know what I mean? Like it really can feel like a a relationship. Do you want to talk a little bit about what that's been like for you? Well, you know it's interesting too because the stories of my poverty run back. I actually was able to trace it back six generations, and so. It's mm-hmm. not a huge surprise that there were choices uh, that were more easy to make along the line of sort of the Dollar Tree to get through the time of raising my kids. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of, for me, what happened was um, before I had kids, I was kind of like, I wasn't really conscious of income. I would just work and have income. And I... I don't know. It was kind of like below consciousness. And then now, with after I had children, I made some choices around what I could do or couldn't do that ended up turning into a, a quite impoverished existence. And wow. when I look at the way the kids have had to live, you know, with not enough food in the house and, you know, not enough gas in the car and not enough <laughs> money for their the basic bills and the PG&E turning off and all those crazy choices I made that resulted in a lifestyle that really was a disconnect from my sort of my the way I am, uh, you know, kind of underneath mm-hmm. the poverty or when I'm not hanging out with poverty, when I'm choosing differently, uh like the transformation was insane, you know. Mm-hmm. So can you, can you talk a little bit about um, what choosing different, like what has it been like? What does that mean? What what does that look like when you're now choosing luxury instead of poverty? <laughs> <laughs> what does that look like for you? Well, you know, I think for me it hasn't. You know, one of the things I love, um, again, Katrina and I were just uh, in a book called The Power of Releasing Judgment, and one of the uh, chapters was also, was by another woman named uh, Rebecca Holtz, and mm-hmm. she talked about choice as kind of this, you know, it's not one choice you make where, I mean, there is a choice of saying enough, you know, I'm done, my life's going to transform, what's it going right. to take? I'm not, I'm not going to be there anymore. I'm done. Like, mm-hmm. I'm done. Stop calling me. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> What's the song, Megan Trainer? The answer is no. <laughs> oh, yes. Just, just no. Yeah, exactly. What yeah. about, tell me your observations when you make a change, because it seems like yeah. I make the change, and then I have to keep making the change. <laughs> well, you know what I think of a lot? Um, <clears throat> so Gary Douglas... Uh, talk has talks often about how he when he was living in poverty like he lived in a room that was basically the size of a box with his son and he would go to secondhand stores and buy one glass of like fine china or fine crystal and he would buy one even if that's all he could afford if it cost him you know two dollars and it was secondhand and he would bring it home and he would drink out of his fine china glass um, and he talks a lot about that, that, how that was the beginning of choosing luxury. And I love that example because, um, you know, A, what have we defined as luxury? And B, like, what do we, what do we, do we think we have to have millions of dollars and that our whole house has to be luxurious? Could you choose luxury one tiny bit at a time, right? Like one, you know, what is it for you that represents luxury? And, you know, what if you didn't have to pay a lot of money for it? Like he went to a secondhand store and bought a piece of fine china, the finest china he could afford. And he brought it home and he drank from it. And then from there, he chose something else. And then from there, he chose something else. So I don't know. I, I really like that example. I think that's a, a, a fun example. I, I of like beginning. that example, Katrina, but I'm also, when I look at that, I also ask myself the question there was an energy of that, like, 
okay, and and he's brilliant, so I'm not. I don't want to criticize anything mm-hmm. that would have come out of there. But what I felt in that energy of that was almost like I'm going to make myself make a choice. Do you see, like, almost like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, see, for me, like, secondhand stores, the vibe in a secondhand store is kind of strange. Like, it smells kind of funny. Okay. And so <laughs> for me, like, for me, it was... Um, well, it's fascinating. All this stuff's coming in. So, first of mm-hmm. all, yes, surrounding yourself with beautiful things is good. <laughs> or is something that can shift the vibration of your being. So, if you're interested in shifting the vibration of your being, then you say, okay, cool. What would that look like for me? And then what am I putting next to my mouth is something that reflects that. So, could I... What I did instead as one of my first moves was I ordered a really nice set of silverware, but they were new, but they looked and felt different. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, they may have not have been the highest end as from a used store, like one spoon, but I, I bought like a whole set of brand new matching silverware instead of like camping trip silverware. And so that then the kids can go and there's a drawer and it's all nice fresh, clean silverware instead of, and so there's something that you're putting, this thing that, all these things that you're putting around you and inside you, Mm -hmm. um, right, like, it could uh, be food, it could be anything. Yeah, maybe it's organic fruit, maybe you don't have enough money for organic fruit, so you buy, like, one piece of organic fruit, you can't have organic fruit 24-7 yet, but you're, like, shifting into asking for more for yourself, and asking for more for yourself, and what can I do today that basically today, because I can't control yesterday, and one of our callers, I'm so thankful that you wrote in the chat like that you're embarrassed about poverty or that you're mm-hmm. ashamed of poverty, because right. honestly, you can't control yet your choices yesterday. You can't. You made mm-hmm. them. Yeah. It's over. <laughs> yeah. Get over it. Right. What can, what can choice we choose now? Make, like in this instant... And you don't have to know why you chose this or that. And when you're choosing new for you, oh, my gosh, one of my authors also, uh, Bettina, go sit next to a tree, you know. Go listen to the mm-hmm. energy of the earth in that in that beauty of that. And that doesn't even cost money. But it's a luxury to sit and commune with nature is a luxury. It's like take a photograph of something beautiful Mm-hmm. That's a luxury, you know? Yeah. And uh, you know what cracks me up, too, is almost everyone now has a phone. Like, there's more phones than people. There's probably 6 billion or 12 billion cell phones on the planet. So what can your phone do? Because almost everybody, even if they're impoverished, has a cell phone. True? <laughs> right, which is kind of interesting. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Almost everybody says, well, at least I'm going to go get, like, a cell phone. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to be without a cell phone. I mean, you see everybody anywhere they live has a cell phone. What can you do with your cell phone to publish yourself to change your money situation right Mm -hmm. now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yes. So, you know what I did? I don't know if you've listened to my show before, but I do this thing. I'm kind of a word nerd. So, I looked up up luxury on the etymology online dictionary, which is a dictionary from uh, that tells you the original meanings of words from, like, the 14th century. So, I looked up poor and I looked up luxury and I found something extremely interesting. So, and I also like Googled a whole bunch of quotes or luxury and poverty. And I posted some of them in the Facebook um, uh, event for this radio show. So I'd like to delve into that. We're going to take a break um, and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about how we define luxury and poverty and what are some of the barriers or what are some of the points of view that we have about what luxury is, what poverty is, and how are those uh, keeping us tied to poverty? How is, how are those keeping us from breaking up with poverty? So you're listening to Messy Adventures in Living with me, your guest, Patrina, uh, no, host, Patrina Fava, and our guest today, Erica Glessing. Don't go anything anywhere. We will be right back. Do you wait until all the traffic lights are green before you get in your car? Of course you don't. Are you waiting until you have everything perfect to begin living? Most of us have learned not to take any steps until we have all the information to make the right choice. What if the opposite is true? 
What if it's choice that creates awareness? Are you willing to make lots of messy choices so you can begin to see the possibilities that you didn't even think existed? Listen for Messy Adventures in Living radio show with self-declared messy living expert Katrina Fava every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 Central, 7 Mountain, and 6 Pacific on A2Zen.fm. How much more expansive would your life be if you were willing to get messy with your choices? What if you really do change molecules by your interaction with them? What if the change you've been looking for is right before your eyes? What if the uncomfortableness that comes with difference could be fun? What if the closed-minded people of the world no longer determined our world? What if gratitude trumps judgment every time? What if your kindness healed the world? What if the earth is asking for your help? And what if you had the resources to give it? This is your invitation to step into something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Picasso, Da Vinci, Shakespeare, Aristotle all knew to be true. Hi, my name is Dane here. Thirteen years ago I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything changed for me. What if there are no dumb questions, or any question too large? What if you being you are the gift and the change this world requires? Is now the time? For more questions to create a change in your world, sign up for a free video series at beingyouclass.com. My gift to you, beingyouclass.com. You're listening to Messy Adventures in Living with Petrina Fava. To participate in today's show, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255. In Canada, 613-800-8736. In the U.K., 033-0001-0625. Or you can Skype us at a2zen.fm. You can also ask questions or comment by email by sending to Petrina at PetrinaFava.com. Now, here's Petrina with more Messy Adventures. Welcome back to Messy Adventures in Living. I'm your host, Petrina Fava, and today our show is Breaking Up with Poverty. So are you ready to break off your dysfunctional relationship with poverty and then have a love affair with luxury instead. And our guest today is Erica Glessing. Um, before we went to break, we were talking about um, different ways to invite luxury into your life. And I just wanted to continue the conversation with talking about what I found when I looked up the word luxury uh, in a dictionary called uh, etymology, et- etymology Dictionary, which is a dictionary that looks at the meaning of words way back from the 13th, 14th century. And it's really interesting to me to always check out the definitions of these words from when they were originally, um, the way they were originally intended. It can really shed some light on the energy of some of these words. So I found something really cool when I looked up luxury. Uh, The first thing right on the screen when I looked at luxury as a noun from the 13th century is sexual intercourse. And (laughs) yeah, right? And then... From the mid, isn't that awesome? I was so excited. (laughs) Um, I'm such a nerd. Uh, And then from the mid 14th century, it says sinful self indulgence, debauchery, Mm -hmm. dissoluteness, lust, excess luxury, profusion. Um, So, first, like that whole thing about sexual intercourse is so cool because if you tap into the energy of like sensualness, and luxury like that kind of matches right for me anyways and then like right after it so like 100 years later in the 14th century it kind of changed its meaning to sinful self-indulgence and debauchery so interesting right like how many points of view how many spins on this word luxury do we have that are that imply that um that implies something negative or that it's excess, right? Mm-hmm. That luxury equals excess um, and that it's it's sinful to have excess. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that, um, Erica? Well, I think it's interesting. One of the things, um, I have a, an event that I do each year called Happiness Telesummit, although this year we shifted it into releasing judgment. But so, 
a couple of years ago, I interviewed someone, and we did a raise the glass ceiling exercise. And she mm-hmm. did it with me, and I let her do it with me. And so we were looking at what was keeping me from, you know, achieving what I wanted to achieve. And it was pretty fascinating because on the call with her, and I didn't say it out loud to, you know, the audience at that point it was being recorded, it was a tuning in to past lives as a sex, um, as doing sex for money. Hmm. And so Ah. a lot of us, actually women, and maybe men too also, have uh, somehow some memory, some cellular memory or some past life memory or some kind of odd memory tying in sex and money. It's something that it's a good idea to clear because uh, otherwise you want to give everything away because when you sell stuff, it ties back into sex. And that's what that made me think of. Like Mm. that whole luxury thing was like how much of us don't want to sell sex because we know that's bad, that was bad, that was bad, that was etched into our bodies as selling it was dirty or selling it was shameful or selling it, whatever it is, whatever our gifts are, if we sell them, like, oh, my gosh, you know, what's crappy about that? That feels bad. Okay, so I'm not ever going to sell my Mm -hmm. gifts because that would be like selling your body. And so if we have that in our bodies anywhere, then when we release it, we're able to get paid to be ourselves and do cool things and help people. And it's not considered bad anymore. And so that we're, we're tying in kind of what's going on that's preventing our connectivity to giving ourselves everything the universe would like and could give us. It could be travel. It could be this. It could be that. Mm. What are you holding back uh, from yourself? And just it doesn't mean you necessarily had to be a whore. <laughs> mm. But if there is a memory of that that is stopping you, it might be time, if this connects to you and you resonate with it, to, to let go of the any drama around that because this could be stopping you from having money. Right. And that's awesome that you're tying in the body right there because um, one of our um, playmates in the chat room here is... Um, talked earlier in the chat room about being sick with poverty. Um, She said, I think she said specifically, I am sick. I have been sick with poverty. Uh, And there's shame there for her. So um, I've invited her to call in. So um, if you'd like to call in, go ahead and we can talk about this with you and maybe clear some stuff. But just before we go on, um, I'd like to just clear all the energy on that. What you just talked about, Erica, because that was awesome. Yeah, so. that bring up some energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah just, thank you. Just a little that bit, right? So, <laughs> so everything. So everything that brings up everywhere you've been a whore, everywhere you've sold your body, and you swore you would never do this, and anywhere you've and you know, there's ties with like prostitution and luxury too, right? Like, you know the pimp and the and the lifestyle and the money and the shame and so everything that brings up everywhere you've been there done that in a past lifetime or maybe in this lifetime um anywhere that's stopping you from enjoying luxury in a different way can you just join and create all of that right wrong good bad pop pop all nine sorts boys and beyond so for anyone who has never listened before and is wondering what the heck i just said that was the Access Consciousness Clearing Statement. Um, you can look up Access Consciousness online. There is actually a specific website called theclearingstatement.com. Basically what it is is something that energetically clears a whole bunch of energy that comes up when we talk about something. So I'll, I'll let listeners talk about all of that. Um, yeah, that was great. I I wanted to start looking at, uh, well, we're waiting for um, the caller to call in, but while we do that, I wanted to look at um, some things that I found online that are interesting um, quotes around luxury and poverty. And one of them was, life doesn't give you what you want. It gives you what you deserve. And there was there's a whole bunch of energy about deserving um, around luxury. Um, the, another quote that I found who that is from somebody named Anthony Trollope. And his what he said was that love is like any other luxury. You have no right to it unless you can afford it. So again, like this energy of deserving and also 
this point of view that we can only have luxury if we buy it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like it, it's something we have to pay for, um, which is what you were saying too, Erica. Like you know, and some of the people in the chat room, um, Christine said that uh, you know, luxury for her is. Uh, oh, sorry, Eleanor said luxury for her is can be about having a hot chocolate with whipped cream, you know, in the bathtub. And and actually, Eleanor asked, what if luxury is not about spending money? So everywhere we've decided that you know, you have to have money and you have to have worked hard for your money in order to deserve luxury. Can we destroy and uncreate all of that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, puck, all nine, shorts, boys and beyonds. Yeah. So what if luxury is not about spending money and how else can we how else can we enjoy luxury without that? Cool. Okay, so I think Roseanne is um live. Uh are you there, Roseanne? Would you Yeah, I'm here. Hey. Thanks for your your comment in the uh, chat room. That was amazing. So, <laughs> yeah. so you're so you're sick with poverty, huh? Tell us about that. I I heard that um, on another show, and I it, it feels good to me because I know that now that the word sick is something that I can go and get treatment for. So oh, wow. it it took the shame away for me because I, I've gone to college, I've spent a lot of money on college, I opened a business, lost some money there, um, had a marriage, lost a lot of money there, and it was like, I just couldn't, you know, just feel like I thought I wanted to feel. You know, I wanted to feel like a successful person, you know, I went to a really good school, and then I got a business that I really liked, and and it all failed, you know, quote unquote. So, <laughs> so now you know I'm like so far in debt. It's just it's shameful. So, mm-hmm. just I hope. love it. You know, I I really yeah. appreciate you um, joining us and just kind of like being with the energy of your experience. Mm-hmm. And immediately, what showed up for me is. I, and I I don't know exactly I don't know exactly so one of the things I got a hit on the business so do you mind if I ask you some questions about the business Sure go ahead So when when you had your own business did you kind of hold it in your body or was it like out of your body how close did you feel to your business It was such a whirlwind I'll give you a brief um, overview. No, no, no. I don't. I don't want to summer me. I don't want to summer okay. me. Uh, it was it. In, did you hold it and carry it inside of you, or did you kind of uh, work on it as being like different from you? Was it inside your body or outside your body? Oh my gosh. Um, it was probably both. <laughs> so a lot of women carry their businesses, especially if they're like a coach or a life, uh, they work on people, they carry their Mm -hmm. business like inside of their solar plexus. And one of the things you can do immediately is move a business to about uh, a foot in front of you and you can shift the energy of a business. Ah, It's so fun. Like I met with someone in 2014 and they said, where is Happy Publishing? And it was, like, inside of my body because I was, like, so proud of it. It was, like, I built it. It was my baby. It was, But it wasn't thriving. It wasn't supporting me. Does that make sense? So Mm -hmm. she sat with me, and we just put it, like, a foot in front of me. And and at that point, it wasn't supporting me enough to leave my – 2013, I couldn't leave my job. So 2014, I left my job, and I had – my business was my whole business – but I couldn't nourish it because it was stuck inside my body. It was so fascinating. Mm. So I moved it about a foot in front of me, and I shifted everything about that business. And I have to tell you, you might have like 12 businesses in your life, Roseanne. This might not be the only business. And every Mm. time you change, your energy can run a business different. Does that make Mm -hmm. sense? It does, yeah. So So there's not... Uh, when you showed me this path that you had chosen, there was a pattern that had gotten etched in there. Does that make sense? Of course. Mm-hmm. So, 
So are you willing to be different starting right this instant with a business in your life? Are you willing to have it be different? Yes. Oh, thank you. Oh, my gosh. Did you feel how good that felt? <gasps> yes. Oh, I'm so ready. Wow. <laughs> and so what if it well, – that's beautiful. Thank you so much for being – now it could be you're inviting a different outcome. Do you see that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, because you're not the same as you were 10 minutes ago. You're not the same person anymore. Right? Right. Oh, and, but... And, but, I, yeah. and I, do clearings, I do clearings all the time. So for me to do them on myself, is it as effective as talking to you? or? Katrina, <laughs> 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 what know. else Say with them the energy that that and I love this. Thank you so much yeah. for being vulnerable and just like mm-hmm. opening up. It's like wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, definitely you can if you clear the stuff yourself. Of course, it will work. It will still work. I think the 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 interesting thing about doing it with someone else is that you already have a point of view in place. A lot of times we already have our own points of view in place and we have our own judgments about what things are. And then when you, you know, when you, when you clear, when you, when you're with someone else and maybe have your bars run or, or you clear, you know, go into Mm -hmm. asking questions with someone else, then they same points of view or judgments that you have in place. And then that, that can be helpful. Um, But you know what I, you know what I really wanted to look at what, what you said when you first started talking is you said that, um, and quote me like let me know if this is correct that being sick with poverty felt good to you because it took the shame away is that what you right. said oh I don't my know god if that's exactly correct I you, don't can know. you can you elaborate on that a little bit because i thought that was right. wild it and it is a feeling of shame because i grew up with it for so long you know i had it huh. since childhood the shame i just saw shame everywhere there was sexual shame, there was money shame, there was family shame, there was just shame, on shame. So that, now that I have this analogy, the shame was inside of me. Mm So it was inside of me and it was outside of me altogether. So it was just a way of being, unfortunately. So I guess it was just kind of putting it all in one pile and saying (laughs) shame and money go together for me. Mm -hmm. So that's where I couldn't differentiate. Yeah, and then but then and then it also ties in with being sick with poverty, sure. right? Cuz originally yeah. the original comment you made in the chat room was that you were sick with poverty and then one of the first things out of your mouth when you started talking was that you like the being sick with poverty took the shame away. So I, I, that's awesome. So everywhere you traded um shame for being sick. Mm-hmm. With all of this, can you would you like to just and create all that? Yes, please. Yeah, right, wrong, good, bad, pop, fuck, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Awesome. And shame is, I mean, and I don't know, I don't know, like, um, how much of work with access consciousness you've done, but shame is, is, you know, we call it a distractor implant. Right. And distractor implants are what distract you from seeing the truth or from seeing, having awareness, right? So how, you know, how much of this shame has distracted you from, from what you know to be true about luxury? And distracting mm-hmm. you from being aware of what's a lie and what's the truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. And I mean, it's it's just a matter of um, it, um, using the clearing statement to to get rid of that. So that's yeah, amazing. That's beautiful. Yeah. The other um, the other thing, Katrina, that was showing up for me around this was uh, if we don't consciously shift our patterns, then they're likely to repeat in our lives. So uh-huh. the word that kept coming out was lost, lost us, lost mm-hmm. that, lost us, lost that. So when we, this was crazy for me. One of the things that showed up that was hideous was for me in my life was I couldn't seem to break up with my ex-husband. I would filed the divorce. I'd left him. I would moved out. And there was this daily stalking. And people oh. kept saying to me, it's your choice. And I'm like, Mm. I'm waking up in my house. How am I choosing him stalking me? You know what I'm saying? Uh Like, how how am I choosing that? Like, it was like, kind of that was the feeling I got from her comment was this out of, not out of control, but like, it's like, almost like I'm not at cause. I'm 
I'm, you know, I'm in this whirlwind, this storm of, of crappy stuff that showed up in yeah. my yes. life. Yes. And yeah. so for me, it wasn't one choice. It was asking myself today, what can I be different today that would mm-hmm. shift everything? And I had to keep asking that. And then I had to do little things, like I actually moved farther away. Moving was hard because I was locked into that place because the kids in the schools and blah, 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 right? It was Mm -hmm. like um, doing, but I had, for me, I had to choose a different, very different, I had to choose very different, and it didn't, for me to shift everything in terms of breaking up with something that was insidious, Mm-hmm. And and Katrina can talk about this too because we we had this great li- lifestyle of judgment, mm-hmm. and so releasing judgment and releasing poverty, they're they're just not it's not going to happen unless you actually that you have to make changes and I and I say have to because otherwise it won't change and everything changed for me. It took me almost six years to stop the behavior of the ex after the divorce. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he mm-hmm. goes, you think you get divorced and you're done. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, so you had to say, same. I'm breaking up with poverty, but still, it's going to be sneaking back if yeah. you don't like constantly, like it's like a vigilance of awareness. I wonder too, um, like when I was talking about breaking up with judgment, is that I was, I was, I was hating judgment so much and I was judging judgment so much and then Mm -hmm. wondering why it wasn't, why it wasn't changing. And we know Mm -hmm. that anything that we judge, we can't change. So, right. How many judgments do we have about being poor Mm -hmm. and how much do we resist being poor? So if we're everywhere, we're resisting being poor and everywhere we're judging poverty rather than seeing it as a gift Rather than having gratitude, <laughs> right? Okay, so everything that brings up everywhere that you can't possibly see where being poor could be a gift, will you just join and create all that? Yeah. Right, I'll get that pop up on the insurance boards and beyond. You don't have to choose it, but you can still look at it and and see it for the contribution that it has been, right? Same with how I was talking about judgment. It's like finally, at the end of my chapter, it's like finally when I lowered my barriers and could be grateful for it, then that's when it changed. So, yeah. uh, you know, like it, same, with, the, same with poverty. Right. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we need to take a break. So um, we're going to take a break. Thank you so, so much for calling in, Roseanne. Um, Thank that you. was awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and um, when I come back, I'd like to take a look at some other interesting uh, quotes that I found, and we could maybe um, go go into some of those interesting points of view that we have. So you are listening to Messy Adventures in Living with myself, Petrina Fava, your host, and my guest today, Erica Glessing. We are breaking up with poverty. Come back soon. Do you wait until all the traffic lights are green before you get in your car? Of course you don't. Are you waiting until you have everything perfect to begin living? Most of us have learned not to take any steps until we have all the information to make the right choice. What if the opposite is true? What if it's choice that creates awareness? Are you willing to make lots of messy choices so you can begin to see the possibilities that you didn't even think existed? Listen for Messy Adventures in Living radio show with self-declared messy living expert Katrina Fava every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 Central, 7 Mountain, and 6 Pacific on A2Zen.fm. How much more expansive would your life be? If you were willing to get messy with your choices. Hey everybody, this is Dr. Dane here, and I would like to invite you to an adventure in being. I've just written and finished a new book known as Being You, Changing the World. Are you one of those dreamers? One of those people who's always known that other possibilities should be available but haven't yet been able to see them be created? Well, I wrote this book for you. In it, you'll find tools, processes, and unique perspectives to change the things you've always wanted to change but didn't know how. In it, you'll find an invitation to a different possibility for a way that we can be in this world that changes not only our lives, but by being us, allows us to contribute to changing everything planet-wide that doesn't work. Are you aware that truly great people, truly being them, is the only thing that has ever created a great change on this planet? 
Are you willing to step up? Are you willing to be one? Check out a copy of my new book, Being You, Changing the World. I invite you to go to beingyoubook.com for a free gift. You're listening to Messy Adventures in Living with Petrina Fava. To participate in today's show, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255. In Canada, 613-800-8736. In the U.K., 033-0001-0625. Or you can Skype us at a2zen.fm. You can also ask questions or comment by email by sending to Petrina at PetrinaFava.com. Now, here's Petrina with more Messy Adventures. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us again on Messy Adventures in Living. Today's show is Breaking Up with Poverty with our guest, Erica Glessing. So we've been talking about some cool stuff around a shame with poverty. And so now I'd like to get into a couple other very interesting things uh, that I found when I Googled quotes about luxury and poverty. So uh, let's see what another one of those is. I posted them uh, in the Facebook event called Breaking Up With Poverty if you're on Facebook and you want to check these out. So, you know, I like Ben Affleck. Did you like Ben Affleck, Erica? <laughs> Not really, but... Oh, okay, good, because here's a quote from him. <laughs> You know, I kind of I I liked him, and then I read this, and then I read this quote that he said about uh, poverty, and I was like, Ben, come on, Ben, I thought you were cute. No, I, I don't know now. So <laughs> I read it, but I I read it, it went through my head really fast. What yeah, it? so I know I don't I actually couldn't head, wrap my head around it. So Ben Affleck has been quoted to say, "There's something really great and romantic about being poor and sleeping on couches," <laughs> and I'm like. What? So what is that, right? Like, what is it about being, you know, and somebody commented on that, like, yeah, maybe when you're in your 20s, you know, <laughs> like, what is it about, what is it that's romantic about being poor? Like, I wonder how many of us have some kind of romantic notion of being poor and sleeping on couches. And actually, what came up for me when I looked at that is like, this idea of we don't need money if we have love. Like, what's that Bon Jovi song, um, Living on a Prayer? You know, we, we've we got each other and that's enough or we got, we've got each other and that's a lot for love. So I wonder if this is a similar energy, like if there's something romantic about being poor and sleeping on couches. It's like we don't have money, but it's OK. It's so romantic that we're poor because, look, we're so in love and we have so much love that we don't need money. Mm. Well, we but weren't we we, love we, and money. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hello? And we can have well, love. I think for my family it was um it was a nobility. We were the media, so we were the writers. Uh, both my parents were publishers. Uh we were the scribes. So it was a level of calibration in the, in the world. And so there was a thing if you took money, it it was it was definitely like look down on mm-hmm. uh because you wanted to be kind of noble it, yeah, and it was really interesting, that dynamic of that. Like, what if um, what if you could be a writer and have gobs of money? Like, what if you could be a healer and have gobs of money to change the world with? And it's like, it's not an either-or universe. That's one of the things. Again, it's crazy we keep going back to the power of releasing judgment, but that book was an and book. It wasn't uh, an mm-hmm. or book, right? It was like, mm-hmm. it's like, what? It, I mean, I would definitely not want to be born again if I couldn't have love and money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know what I? You know what I didn't. I, I just wanted to pick up on something that you said about um, writing and poverty and like I, I. One of the other quotes that I read and I didn't post it in the Facebook uh, page, but one of them was this one: um, "The greatest foe to art is luxury. Art cannot live in its atmosphere." And that's from Will Morris. So I wonder, like, how many artists? You know, the whole concept of the starving artist. Right. Like, you know, how is that attractive? Is that romantic somehow? Um, you know, the greatest foe to art is luxury. Art cannot live in its atmosphere. 
So everywhere we've decided that if we're artists in any way or that if we are creating, that we have to be, that like being poor is is like a some kind of way to um, tap into our creations or something. Um, and mm. a, another another really interesting quote that was by Jimmy Dean that he said poverty was the greatest motivating factor in my life. And I feel like that 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 ties in with artists as well, and even writing. It's like mm. you, you know, if you're a writer, is it possible that you're using poverty? as a way to have something to write about or like, do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like this, this, this idea of being an artist and being tied to poverty is somehow romantic. Hmm. What do you think? Okay, well, wait, let's clear that. So everything that brings up, <laughs> yeah, everything, everything that brings up for people, would you like to just join and create everywhere you have bought the interesting point of view that art and luxury cannot coexist. Will you just join and create all that? Right, yeah. Um, that pop up on that shorts, boys and beyonds. Yeah, sorry. Go I mean, ahead. essentially, any story that you keep regurgitating sure. over and over again about your poverty, and often we can do this as a way of like, we were so bright and shiny and brilliant, and so poverty was a way of like not being as bright as we could be. It's like mm-hmm. oh, we're yeah. so bright and shiny and brilliant, and we have so much information that shows up at our fingertips, Petrina Fava. She's one of the most, you are one of the most brilliant writers I have ever had the pleasure of publishing. I mean, honestly, your writing is insanely good. And so where is it that we went, well, as long as I keep saying, oh, but I was poor, you know, or oh, but I don't have any money. Oh, but, oh, I know I look brilliant and I seem great, but I don't have any money. So how have we used it to dim our light so that we can fit in with the masses and fit in with the people who have problems. A lot of people in the country, in the world right now, are bummed about money. So we don't have to choose that. Money can make more money. Money can be happy. And money can give us more money. We can have our money invest and become more money. And then it's this fun thing with money where it's (laughs) making more and it's having more and it's making more and it's having more. But instead, that a lot of times we would much rather keep telling our stories mm-hmm. which etch us into that reality of that. And so the the way that I found to best shift is to just let go of the stories. Right. And that was the whole thing of the insight of breaking up with poverty was, you know, what if it were different and what if I wasn't married to you? What if I was married to luxury and what if I woke up every day feeling that sense of feeling and I would start, I do think starting with the things that you put on and around your body and and not getting caught up into how much they cost you mm-hmm. financially, but just do they feel luxurious to you? So does the fabric feel soft to your body? Exactly. Does the spoon, is it real? You know, we used a lot of plastic forks and knives when the kids were little just because they hated doing dishes. But that feeling is so cheap. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing so, because I can totally relate. <laughs> yeah, right? So I I just look at, like, what choice could I make today? And then I don't really have to understand. Honestly, I don't have to understand what my – I mean, everyone says, like, really get into what your parents did. But honestly, if I don't know everything about everything, I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I just want to look, I'm just looking in the chat room with some of the, um, comments about when have people not ever been bummed out about money is what, cause what you were saying. And can we just move on please? Um, and then Christine said, luxury is my new lover. Um, you know, <laughs> Eleanor is taking tonight off work. I that's know, that's right? Um, you know, last week I listened to a radio show. I think it was, um, Keisha Clark. I, I sorry, um, I don't remember what her show was called, and she talked. They were talking about um, sex, sexual sex. They were talking about sex and asking questions like, um, you know, universe, will you have sex with me? And like, uh, and asking your creations to have sex with you. But it's like it's it's the energy of creation. And so, you know, what if we ask like luxury, luxury, will you have sex with me? Like luxury, will you be my lover? It's interesting because when I remember when I looked up the original definition of the word. The, like go to etymology online. The first line, the first thing that is there is sexual intercourse. So I don't know. I just thought that's cool. Um, 
Are you there, Erica? <laughs> yeah. Oh. So I, there's, a really You're like... funny, there's a really funny, um, well, I don't know. There's a, so Shannon O'Hara is the, you know, the mm-hmm. daughter of uh, Steph's daughter, Gary Douglas. She has a whole passage on, you know, sex and money, and it's pretty interesting. And so um, the second chakra is orange, and that is the money and creativity and sex all in that same place, which is actually for women, you know, it's right at the, it's above the base of your button before you're below your belly button. <laughs> oh, right. And that is the sex and money chakra. And yes. so uh, that place yes. for creative energy is very light. And so if you want to clear that orange, um, one of the things when people are job searching, I tell them to have lots of, um, of sex. <laughs> Yeah, really, because it's the energy of... Exactly. It is really cool, actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that yeah, that yeah. show was What Sex Got to Do With It with guest Keisha yeah. Clark from uh, Rhonda Burns show, if any yeah. of the listeners are interested. Okay, so we're down to the last four minutes. Erica, do you want to talk a little bit about what you have going on, what you have coming up, what people can... Um, how people can connect with you, that kind of thing? Well, I just... Um, I'm having so much fun now with, I have a podcast and a blog, Breaking Up With Poverty. The podcast is the Arabic Blessing Show. So I invite people to find that. It's now Googleable. It's supposed to get on iTunes, but it's not quite there. And uh, I'll type in the chat here. Uh, I'm doing some uh, gift sessions for listeners. So if you wanted to go to happypublishing.net, I think it's transform. Let me check. Um, I'm interested in giving you a consultation on this and see if, you know, maybe a specialized coaching program for you would be a good fit for you. So if that feels at all light or fun and spending some time shifting this in a more uh, profound way in your life, then uh, I'm in because I've learned so much in the last 10 years and it's just aching to be shared. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Hmm. Nice, cool. And so that was happypublishing.net forward slash uh, transform for anyone who is wondering. Um, uh, th- that's is that your that's your website happypublishing.net. Do you have uh-huh. a, another one? Do you have uh, several websites, or is that the only one? Uh huh. I have. Uh, well, Erica Glessing. I have ericaglessing.com. Oh, okay. Uh, well, thank so. you. And then I have the the podcast is the Erica Glessing Show dot podbean dot net or awesome. dot com. Yeah, Great. so I have a, I have a, you know, I'm having so much fun with the energy of this, awakening the planet into their mm-hmm. own brilliance. It's like, let's just get there faster. <laughs> let's yes, get let's get there faster, please. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, so, I, uh, for any of you who would like to be in touch with me, my website is uh, www.patrinafava.com. Um, the books that we have been talking about, so the books that I've published with Erica Glessing are um, three of them, Creations, Conscious, Conception, Fertility, Pregnancy, and Birth, and then also Possibilities in Parenting, and most recently, Releasing Judgment. You can find those all on Amazon.com. Um uh, in, in terms of releasing judgment, I, you can contact me for private sessions, private breaking up with judgment sessions. Those are new. Those are new creations that I've just, I'm really excited to share with people. Mm, so, um, mm-hmm. any last words on, uh, luxury? Oh, you know what I wanted to say? I, I, <laughs> when I, I forgot. I looked up the word poor and I caught something really cool. You know the poor boy sandwich? You ever heard of the poor boy sandwich? Okay. And the, the poor boy sandwich is a sandwich that is um, made with simple ingredients, and yet it's very filling. So, <laughs> so, you know, have you decided that you have a life that can be very filling, even if it's poor? And would you like to drop that and invite luxury into your life instead? So, um, nice. yeah. Um, and releasing you, judgment, yes. Katrina. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Aw, thank you so much. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Goodbye. Thanks for playing with us on Messy Adventures in Living. <laughs> Petrina Fava will return next Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. Central, 7 a.m. Mountain, and 6 a.m. Pacific 
on A2Zen.fm. We'd love to have you join us again. Until then, have fun creating your phenomenal life, mess and all. <laughs>